Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Rethwin Arbenlow and I'm a blogger and photographer of the Second Life. Today I'm going to show you how to create a depth of field effect using wind lights and using Photoshop's lens blur tool with an alpha channel. It sounds very complicated, but bear with me, it's really not that difficult. So this is not my own method. This was taught to me by Anya Omai, who is an extraordinary blogger and artist. She created a plurk about a month ago that had a gif of creating this effect using this wind light that she offers as a download. So I will link you this plurk in the YouTube description so that you can go and grab these for yourself. But I know in for myself and for many of you, it is easier to follow a YouTube video that does sort of step by step. So I'm going to teach you on YouTube Anya's method for doing this as best I can. Okay, so for this, in my experience in the past month creating photos with this method, you really need to have a lot of space behind you to create the amount of depth you need to create the depth of field. If your scene is very close together and close to you, there's not enough room for the wind light to separate your body from your background. So you do need some space behind you. You need some depth to create your depth of field effect with this method. So first you're going to want to take any photos with whatever lighting that you want to have. You need to make sure your camera stays at the same angle the whole time. So if you have Firestorm, the Photo Tools camera menu has this option here to save your camera view. And then if I go away from it, I can just hit this button and I'm back. Camera angle is very important. Okay, so first we'll just take a photo with the wind light we actually want or however many photos of wind lights you would like to take. So we'll just turn on my advanced lighting model and take just a random one of Rose's wind lights and we'll just take a shot with that. So we'll just pull our wind light over a little. Okay, so we would take this shot. So refresh and save. I have actually already taken a shot. So we save it. We save as many wind light shots as we want to create. And then we need to create the final wind light which is the actual depth map wind light. So I have already downloaded and installed the wind light. If you have not ever installed a wind light before, there are tutorials on Second Life for installing wind lights. So I'm going to go and find my depth map by starting to type depth map. See here, it pulled it up. Hit enter, it'll pull up my depth map. Now you can see that it becomes like sort of gray, black, white. So I actually am going to turn off my advanced lighting model because I find it makes it more flat and smooth. Okay, so now I have what's in front of me, which is my avatar, darker, and what's further back as white. So whatever is dark is the part that will be less blurred, and whatever is white will be more blurred. If you need to edit a little bit of the sky, you can click Edit Sky Preset, and then here under the haze section, you can change, for instance, distance multiplier to bring more white if you want to. But for the most part, if you have enough distance, the wind light is fine by itself. So I'm going to take a shot with the depth map wind light. So I'll refresh and take a shot of that. Now that we've taken both the depth map and the regular photo, we're going to go to Photoshop and actually create the effect. So here is my depth map one, and here is my regular photo. So for the depth map, I need to make some changes. I need to desaturate the image, and then I need to change the levels. So I'm going to desaturate the image. You can use the desaturate tool, or you can use control U and go desaturate from the hue saturation menu. Either way, you just need to completely desaturate your image so it's only in monochromatic tones. 
Now we need to change the levels. So we're going to hit Control L. That will bring up the levels window. You can also, if you're on a Mac, it may be Command L. OK, so we've pulled the levels window up. Now we need to bring in these arrows from the sides because we want to make the back more white and the front more black. So we're going to move the arrow down and you can see it's darkening out my avatar. I want my avatar to be black and I want the background to be more white. The more white you have, the less detail is in that section. So the parts that are darker will blur less when we create the effect. So we can stop here. This whole section is blurred out and then this has a graduated blur out. So we'll click OK and then we just need to select. We can hit Control A to select and Control C to copy. The tools are also up here for selecting and copying. Okay, so we've copied this. Now we need to go to our regular image and we need to put this somewhere where it will create the effect. So we actually go to channels. So we're in layers right now. We need to go to channels. And here, let me show you from scratch. So it starts out like this. So here you've got your channel. Now you're going to create a new layer here. Click the new layer button. It creates an alpha channel and that's what we need. So we came to our main image. We hit the channels tab and we hit new. It created an alpha. On the alpha, we paste control V paste the depth mask. So this alpha is now our depth mask. Then I can click RGB, goes back to normal, go back to layers. Now, any edits you want to include in the blur, I suggest you do first. But do not adjust the size or angle of your photo at all. So if you want to do shadowing or if you want to combine your wind lights, do that first. And then as soon as you've done everything you want to do with the image before you change size or shape, get all of that done first, anything you want to include in your blur. So now that I've completely finished editing, even though I haven't edited anything, consider this completely finished. Now what I want to do is I want to go to filter, blur, lens blur, which we've used in previous tutorials. So by default, it will be set to none, which would blur the whole image. But we actually want to blur using a source this time. We want to use alpha one. That's the alpha mask we just created. So we'll click alpha one. Now it's blurring only the parts of my image that were lighter colored in my alpha. So you can see it's created a great effect here. You may have to change some of your options here. You can copy mine if you'd like to, and you can change them a little to do more or less blur. For instance, you can see here, you can do a little less, a little more. So change them as you will. Now I'll click OK. And ta-da, it's already done it for me. So if I go back, this is what I started with. And this is what it created. So it creates this depth of field look without actually having to use depth of field, worry about your alphas, worry about focusing your camera properly. It does all of that for you. It's a much cleaner way, in my opinion, of creating depth of field and also a little bit more of a realistic look. So that is how you create the effect. And then once you've blurred it, if you want to change your angle, you can resize it, change your angle. But don't do that until you've blurred it. So now I've got a pretty shot. So I've got all my blurs as much as I want. And you can do this a little more perfect. Some of this maybe I didn't do that amazing. But for the sake of a tutorial, it's OK. So here's an example of a photo that I did this with. So it was actually at the same location. 
I created this image from this and this. Created this. So you can do the same thing. Create that effect. Start here and here. And that's it. So I will link you to Anya's Plurk so you can get the download. And then you can do the same for yourself. And it's great. Again, thanks so much to Anya Amai for the tutorial that you created. And I hope that you all enjoyed this. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you.